हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट बेसिक कंसेप्ट ऑफ थर्मोडाइनेमिक्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट डेफिनेशन ऑफ थर्मोडाइनेमिक्स थर्मोडाइनेमिक्स इज द साइंस ऑफ एनर्जी ट्रांसफर एंड इट्स इफेक्ट ऑन द फिजिकल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ द सब्सटेंस नाउ व्हाट इज द फिजिकल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ द सब्सटेंस फिजिकल प्रॉपर्टीज दैट मीन्स इट इज सम कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स थ्रू इट्स फिजिकल कंडीशन मे बी डिस्क्राइब इट इज नॉन एज ए properties of the substance suppose we are discussing about any uh, system having a some pressure volume and temperature through it its physical condition may be described so it is known as a physical properties now second definition of thermodynamics is that the word thermodynamics is made from two different greek word first is thermo and second one is dynamics thermo means hot or heat and dynamics means power or powerful the study of the matter in the motion therefore the word of thermodynamics means study of heat related to matter in a motion okay so there are two definition of thermodynamics first definition we already discussed about and also second definition we already discussed about now there are four different law of thermodynamics are available Uh, first is zero law of thermodynamics second one is first law of thermodynamics third one is the second law of thermodynamics and fourth one is the third law of thermodynamics first of all we are discussing about first one zero law of thermodynamics it represents the concept of temperature and deals with the thermal equilibrium now later on in this chapter uh, statement of zero law of thermodynamics we will discuss it represent the concept of temperature or absolute temperature we can say and deals with the thermal equilibrium now we are discussing about uh, second one first law of thermodynamics it is nothing but it is energy conservation rule we know the statement of energy conservation rule energy neither be created nor be destroyed but it is just transfer from one form of energy to the another form of energy uh, or in other word it represent the concept of internal energy third one is the second law of thermodynamics second law having a two different statement of laws first one is kelvin planck statement and second one is the clausius statement on the basis of their two statements uh, uh, here we conclude that it indicate the limit of converting heat into the work and introducing principle of increase the entropy as we know that 100% of heat never be converted into the work that's why uh, how much amount of heat is converted into the work and how much amount of heat it is not converted into the work it is known as a uh, we can say entropy or disorder due to the disorderness of the system some amount of heat is not converted into the work it is known as a entropy so it is giving the principle of increase the entropy now fourth one is the third law of thermodynamics third law of thermodynamics which is related with the availability of the energy so it is concerned with the level of availability of the energy and define the absolute zero entropy okay so uh, generally entropy is measured in form of difference between two state okay so at a, any particular state we cannot find the value of entropy so third law of thermodynamics give about the absolute point entropy or absolute zero entropy now we are discussing about microscopic point of view and macroscopic point of view okay now there are two points of view from which the behavior of matter can be study first one is the macroscopic and second one is the microscopic in the macroscopic approach a certain quantity of the matter is considered without event occurring at molecular level being taking into account means what that uh, macroscopic point of view is not concerned with the moment or process which is taking place at molecular level it is just relate with the overall behavior of the system any property which can directly measured by any instrument then it is known as a macroscopic property and that uh, perception is known as a macroscopic point of view now we are discussing about microscopic point of view from microscopic point of view matter is composed of myriads of molecules 
and the behavior of the gas is described by summing up the behavior of each molecule such a study is made in microscopic way means it is totally opposite from macroscopic point of view suppose uh, after, uh, we are taking one example suppose in one bottle gas is filled with some temperature and pressure suppose anyone ask me that after 10 minute how much pressure and temperature will be changed then i can easily uh, give the answer by measure any pressure uh, burden tube pressure gauge through pre uh, i me measure the pressure and through a thermometer i can easily measure the temperature so i am getting a def difference between both the reading before 10 minute and now okay so i can easily give the answer but if it is macroscopic point of view now we are discussing about microscopic point of view so as per its initial condition all the molecules available inside the bottle how that behavior will be changed and each and every molecule behavior means each and every molecule pressure and temperature change with respect to time is considered and taking average or we can say statistical method which is used to find the pressure and temperature after 10 minutes okay so this is the difference between microscopic point of view and macroscopic point of view now we are discussing about the difference between microscopic approach and macroscopic approach first of all micro that means small and macro means big or total we know that microscopic point of view means we have to consider each and every molecule behavior and in macroscopic point of view we are not considering any molecular behavior so that why that's why micro means small and macro means big okay this approach of thermodynamics is concerned with the individual behavior of the molecule and in macroscopic point of view this approach of thermodynamics is concerned with the overall or gross behavior of the molecule now uh, it is non uh, sorry uh, microscopic point of view it is known as a statistical thermodynamic i already discussed with you suppose in that bottle 10000 molecules are there so all 10000 molecule pressure and temperature which we have to consider that's why it will be you uh, sorry uh, that's why we have to use any statistical method for analysis of the system otherwise it is too much time consuming process and uh, uh, micro macroscopic point of view it is known as the classical thermodynamics why because any physical property which is measured by any instrument which is used for it directly use it and measure it without considering molecular motion now next is macroscopic point of view the behavior of the system is found by using statistical method and in macroscopic point of view the behavior of the system is found by the simply mathematical formula i already discussed with you this thing okay statistical method which we have to use for analyze the system and any meter or we can say any instrument which give the direct result we do the calculation on the simple calculator we are getting the answer it is macroscopic point of view the properties like velocity force or collision kinetic energy impulse momentum etc which are which describe the molecule cannot be easily measured by instrument also our sense cannot be filled it okay so i already discussed with you any property which is directly measured by any instrument okay then it is macroscopic property but if there are so many properties are there kinetic energy impulse momentum then uh, uh, velocity force which cannot directly measured by any instrument okay uh, you have to measure any one property uh, you are doing some calculation on the basis of it you are getting the answer of that property so all these properties are come into the microscopic point of view and the value of proper uh, in macroscopic point of view the value of properties of the system are their average value and it measured by the instrument or change in the property can be felt by our sense okay 
so, so we know that uh, uh, I already discussed with you okay microscopic uh, macroscopic point of view means it it is the property which is directly measured by the instrument or we can say that it can be filled by our sense okay now next an important difference is that microscopic point of view the description of the system is so complicated is in which large number of variables are required and in macroscopic point of view the description of system is simple in which only few properties are required okay so this is the difference between microscopic point of view and macroscopic point of view it is very important now next and very important point for our syllabus it is thermodynamic systems and control volume now what is thermodynamic systems sorry system so we are discussing about first of all uh, definition of thermodynamic system so thermodynamic system it is defined as a quantity of matter or region in the space which is chosen for the study okay any quantity of matter means uh, in uh, suppose you are sitting in any room having numbers of uh, uh, substance are there you are choosing any one substance out of them it is your system you are studying on them then it is your system same thing here it is defined as a quantity of matter or a region in the space chosen for the study it is known as a thermodynamic system now surrounding everything external to that system it is called as a surrounding or environment again i repeat that thing you are sitting in a room numbers of substance are there out of that substance you are choosing one substance okay remaining all outside of that substance it is known as a surrounding and that substance is known as a thermodynamic system now boundary thermodynamic boundary or boundary the system is separated from the surrounding by a system boundary okay so we can say you have choose one substance okay that substance is separated from the surrounding through a one imaginary line okay having a no physical dimensions like a length diameter or area volume it is known as a boundary so here it is clearly given that in short system and surrounding connect with each other by one layer having zero thickness zero volume and zero mass i already discussed with you it is imaginary line it is imaginary line which is separated system and surrounding okay so it is known as a thermodynamic boundary okay here you can see that i showing you uh, on this piece of the paper i am drawing one diagram uh, inside of that diagram it is known as a system okay outside of at uh, that diagram it is known as a surrounding and that diagram outline which is separating system and surrounding which is known as a boundary okay now we are discussing about universe universe that means the combination of the system surrounding and boundary together it is known as a universe okay means uh, our atmosphere that we have to consider as a universe because in atmosphere uh, that substance is also available surrounding is also available and that boundary is also available okay so universe is the combination of system surrounding and boundary okay now next is the thermodynamics types of thermodynamic system there are three types of systems are available in the world okay so first of all we are discussing about open system then closed system then isolated system now open system in this system matter as well as energy both can transfer the system to the surrounding please remember one thing matter means mass okay so in any system mass as well as energy both can transfer 
from system to surrounding or surrounding to system it is known as a thermodynamic sorry open system okay now we know that there are so many things are available in the world which is open system first of all we are discussing about air compressor in air compressor we know that air is entering from one side it will be compressed and taking outside okay so entry to exit mass as well as energy both are transferring because we know that in compressor mass is entering from one side we are providing some energy okay so that energy is stored inside it so energy as well as mass both are leaving from the compressor when process is completed so mass and energy both are transfer from system to surrounding and surrounding to system because air entering is the process of uh, mass of mass of ma or matter is entering from surrounding to system once the process is completed mass as well as energy both are leaving from the system to surrounding okay so here you can see that open system that means system in which mass entry mass exit means mass in mass out energy in energy out all things are taking place there are so many examples are there of uh, open system boiler is the open system then pump is the open system then your ic engine of or we can say engine of your bike or car is the open system okay so there are so many examples of open systems are available okay mass as well as energy both can transfer from system to surrounding or surrounding to system are known as a open system okay now we are discussing about closed system in this system only energy can transfer from the system to surrounding matter means mass is not allowed to transfer from system to surrounding or surrounding to system now uh, in this type of system only energy can cross the boundary means entering inside the system or exit from the system okay so it is known as a closed cycle uh, closed system in closed system uh, mass cannot transfer means mass cannot leaving from the system or mass cannot entering inside the system but in real world there is no any complete closed system is available I very clearly speaking to you and uh, because replacement may be possible uh, first uh, I give the example engine oil inside the engine piston crank mechanism it is the closed system we know that in engine engine oil is available in crank okay so it is not used we can say or we cannot consume or we cannot continuously entering inside the system or leaving from the system okay it is used to absorb the heat of the engine as well as provide the lubrication to the engine so it is closed system then air available in your tire it is also one type of closed system because continuous flow is not available and in that system okay mass and energy can transfer okay but mass cannot transfer from that system okay so here you can see that energy in and energy out is possible mass in mass out is not possible now third in one is the isolated system in this system energy as well as matter or mass both are not allowed to transfer from system to surrounding or surrounding to system okay now in, this is very complicated statement because there is no system in the world which is isolated system means energy as well as mass, mass both cannot transfer from system to surrounding or surrounding to system you can see the diagram of isolated system okay so there is no any actual there is no any isolated system in the world but we can consider a thermos flask as an isolated system so it is not a perfect isolated system it is just an uh, partial isolated system now we are discussing about homogeneous system and heterogeneous system a system consists consists of a single phase it is termed as a homogeneous system we know that how many phases are available uh, 
solid liquid and gaseous three phases are generally available in the world okay so sorry one minute man okay so there are three types of phase are available solid liquid and gaseous okay a system consists of a single phase is term as a homogeneous system means in any system mixtures of single phase is available suppose uh, mixtures of solid and solid okay coal and wood pcs are mixed in one bottle or in any one closed vessel that system is known as a homogeneous system then mixtures of milk and water okay then mixtures of hydrogen gas and nitrogen gas all these mixtures are known as a homogeneous system okay now what is phase phase is a quantity of matter homogeneous throughout in chemical composition and physical structure it is called as a phase there are three phases are available liquid solid and gaseous phase okay or gas phase okay throughout chemical composition and physical structure okay now chemical composition and physical structure we already know in uh, chemistry of 11th and 12th or uh, in diploma student they can they are studied in a uh, uh, first year chemistry of uh, diploma now we are discussing about heterogeneous system heterogeneous system that means a system com, uh, consist of one more than one phases is known as a heterogeneous system mixtures of ice and water okay then mixtures of water and steam okay then there are so many example of heterogeneous system so different phases are mixing with each other it is heterogeneous system now we are discussing about control volume okay uh now what is control volume and why it is required okay so first of all we know that uh there are three type of system open system closed system and isolated system in closed system there is no any problem because mass is always remains constant but in open system there are some problem because mass is not always available in fixed amount it is always in flowing way okay so we cannot predict how much amount of actual mass is available inside the system okay so when we analyze any closed system then there is no problem because mass is constant okay but when we analyze any open system it is too much difficult because we cannot predict how much amount of mass is available in that system so we are discussing about control volume in most engineering problems of the open system such as in engine compressor turbine the mass of the system is not fixed therefore in the analysis attention is focused on certain volume in the space surrounding of the system is known as a control volume means just i discussed with you that mass is not remains constant that's why we have to concentrate on a certain volume please remember my word mass is not remains constant that's why we have to concentrate on certain volume which is always remains constant inside the system okay that volume is known as a control volume and that volume is separated from the surrounding uh, by one imaginary line which is known as a control surface okay now there is one example of control volume is given giving here control volume example here they are considering one compressor compressor which is run with the motor now fresh air is entering from the bottom side and compressed air is taking outside from the upper side okay now uh, work is provided to the system for run the compressor so work is inlating and when we know uh, as we know that uh, when we doing the compression process pressure will be increased so temperature will definitely increase 
so heat is rejected into the environment now when water run the compressor fresh air is taking inside continuously compressed it and leaving it this process is continuous so how much amount of mass is available inside this uh, compressor we cannot predict that or we cannot consider that that's why we have considered certain volume which is noted by dotted line which is known as a control surface okay so inside it it is known as a control volume so compressor control volume is considered now we have to focus on a volume only not focus on in on its mass flow rate so instead of, uh, here one statement is given so we can easily understand i already explain you instead we can concentrate uh, our attention on the volume form by the compressor surface and consider the compressed air and fresh air stream as mass leaving and entering the control volume the surface of compressor from the control surface for this case and mass is crossing to the control surface at two locations okay so this is the control volume okay so today we are discussing about basic concept of thermodynamics first of all definition of thermodynamics then uh, laws of the thermodynamics then microscopic point of view macroscopic point of view types of system and control volume okay thank you